Hey guys, Jacob here and welcome to another episode of Automated Seller Podcast. We have a new special guest, Ryan, founder of Sully Analytics, which is the Amazon SaaS platform, uh, which automates accounting and also has some human touch in it. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hey, Jacob. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. And yes, Ryan, maybe we can start uh, with a very simple question. I mean, I really want to have um, a little bit of an introduction, maybe first to you, then obviously we'll talk about your uh, journey to found the Sally Analytics and then what it is all about. But first, maybe Ryan, um, could you share with us uh, your background, your story? How did you get to Amazon? And then, of course, how did you end up building uh, Sally Analytics? Yeah, of course, Jacob. So I'm pretty young and it was seven years ago when I first stumbled upon Amazon. What do young, young mean? Sorry. It's, I mean, I'm 20 years old right now. Oh, wow. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> then young. You're the, the youngest guest here. <laughs> oh, <woo. laughs> awesome. Nice. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. No worries. So in high school, I won a $5,000 scratch ticket actually. And I was looking up ways to make, turn that $5,000 into $10,000. And I just stumbled upon an advertisement for fulfillment by Amazon that this way that you can make money online without needing to touch the products. And I was like, that sounds good. because I don't want to be shipping, packing stuff. And I went on Alibaba, found a product, put in $500 and it just started selling. Didn't even need to do any advertising. And over the years, it. I bit I basically just kept reinvesting that pl profit into larger orders as well as new products and from the first one that was kind of a off the shelf generic product but I really have learned to enjoy the product design process and all of our products have been custom since then and I sell in the the tool space I sell tool belts and accessories for construction workers so it's kind of cool learning about that industry and I've kind of grown it to do a couple hundred thousand dollars a year with a small team from oh, wow. all around the world. That's awesome. That's awesome. And th that was really like you, you started when you were 13, right? That's yeah. Just about 14. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. So basically you, 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 you started selling, you, you learned everything on your own. Right. And then at some point you, you came, decided to actually start the, uh, Sally analytics. So I, I'm really curious. Uh, when was the switch? Why why did you actually decide to start and build the Amazon SaaS platform and not just maybe continue the uh, seller, seller journey? Yeah, I started really seriously researching this a bit about about a year ago. And I've always been really entrepreneurial. I'm always thinking other business ideas. And especially once I got a couple of team members in place to kind of handle the repeated tasks, it gave me the freedom to try and look at other business opportunities. And I've I've really learned to love the Amazon and e-commerce ecosystem. So I knew I wanted to stay in here, but especially being so young and I really like learning, I wanted to try something new. And so my first experience was business to customer, B2C. I wanted to figure out something that was business to business. And again, I started with YouTube. I saw a bunch of advertisements for like, social media marketing agencies and all this oh, yeah. generic junk that's way oversaturated but there, there, there are a lot of gurus also like promoting it and the, the actual yeah. real real um uh, social media agency is uh, to, to build it and to run is, is completely different to, uh, and it's is the opposite of what we see actually on youtube like i'm actually coming not not from the background but like i one of the reasons that i started delta logic was that i also kind of went to this uh, self-improvement community and then i watched a lot of gurus um back then there was no like iman gassi that is right now but like there were a bunch of them back then like ty lopez and so on and they, they were promoting all of those things so i, I know what, what you're saying right uh but yeah go on <laughs> yeah so i wanted something business to business and after getting kind of annoyed with the gurus i was like let me step back and actually look at what are my pain points and I really like data. I track a ton, both about my health, my fitness, and business KPIs. And my accounting process, I've always done it myself, as well as I spent a couple summers working for an accountant in high school and college. So I, I had learned that accounting is something I enjoy, and I realized that there was a number of pain points I had 
using multiple softwares and connecting data to these spreadsheets to run these custom reports that I wanted that no, there was no one easy way to do it. I needed to do everything myself. And, and that what, software, so what software is the juice? Sorry. Yeah. So I start, I used QuickBooks desktop mainly. Then I switched to QuickBooks online oh, yeah. and I used integration programs like A2X for, to get the data from Amazon into QuickBooks. And then for e-commerce analysis, I was using Sellerboard, which kind of, Sellerboard, yeah. they do a lot of analytics on skew profit, but it, does, it it's not an accounting software. So you yeah, still need yeah. QuickBooks. Surely, surely. And then uh, pretty much uh, you somehow uh, had to create the sell, sell analytics. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really curious about the switch, right? Like how, how did it end up? Yeah. So at first I, I've learned to try and validate things first. And so I wanted to talk to a number of Amazon sellers to see, is this a pain point? Mm -hmm. And I've been fortunate enough to meet some other Amazon sellers in my path. I went to them first and they also experienced some similar pain points maybe not always in wanting as advanced reporting as I, but definitely in the simplicity of needing multiple tools to do their accounting and never being sure, is this actually correct? <laughs> and I kept that up. I, I did some cold emailing as well. I found other Amazon sellers online and I tried to be really non-salesy, like, hey, I'm just a fellow seller, just trying to learn how do you do your accounting? Where are your pain points? And I was able to set up some meetings with people and eventually those actually turned into some of my first customers. That's awesome. So you actually did like a, in the software, in the software world, so-called so disk, um, sorry, product discovery phase, right? Like you, you, you a kind of first, before building something, you actually found the pain points. You actually looked at your first potential customers if they have the same uh, pain point, and then you actually develop the software. It's actually a very common pattern. Also, like I have a lot of uh, SaaS uh, friends, like SaaS founders friends, who are um, actually also like got to um, incubators like y, y Combinator, and also like they they got like multiple millions of fundings through other VCs, but like. Um, one way of actually building SaaS platforms nowadays is also that you first actually sell it and then you build it. And it's actually a great way. And I think it's the only way that you should do it. Um, right now, we are also working on some internal um, SaaS. I, I don't want to announce it yet, but all I can say that we actually sold it first to a couple of customers and now we are building it. So I really like your approach. And when it comes to actually um sell us uh where did you meet them like uh, did you was it like from facebook groups or did you go to some conferences so at first uh the the quickest people i'm in kind of an amazon mastermind group and okay i've kind of become friends with some people so they were my immediate contacts and then i also there were some facebook groups that i reached out to people i would search like people who posted anything about accounting bookkeeping quickbooks a2x and as well as Reddit, I was kind of scanning those to see who's mentioning these topics. And then let me try and give them value because I don't want to mm -hmm. just take take from them, try and help them with whatever they were figuring out, even if it means giving tips on QuickBooks because I've used it, but then ask to learn more about how they kind of handled their finances and where those pain points might be. Surely, surely. And uh, then at some point, right, you decided to actually build it. So in order to build it, you need to know how to code. So I'm actually curious, like, how, how was it for you? Did you actually hire some engineers um, or did you have some friends who code or maybe did you learn to code? Like, I'm, I'm really curious about the, the building process right now. So you already know that there's a need for such a system. Uh, you already could have, like, your first potential customers for it, but now the execution part. So I'm really curious about that. Yeah. And backing up one step too, in the validation process, I was using Figma to design kind of mm -hmm. a mock-up of it. And yeah. I'm not very artistic in any way. I just had a gray, white, white page with gray rectangles and text where I wanted <laughs> stuff to be. And I was showing people, I was like, does this look good? They're like, oh, I guess. And <laughs> good enough. <laughs> good enough. It, it got the, it hit the pain points. And yes. my first thing when I was more serious is I went on Upwork and I found a UI designer who for about $400, he, he really took my vision, made it high fidelity, clickable, and kind of put exactly what was in my head onto, onto the software. And that was 
I kind of did a round, I circled back with some of those initial people saying, Hey, here's kind of what this will look like. Do you have any more thoughts? And they're like, Oh yeah, that's even better. Kind of combining that QuickBooks and the reporting. So I kind of tried to keep in touch with them as I did that validation process there. Surely, surely. So you got the so you, you got the mocks mockups of your app, yeah. uh, and now the the hardest part, so the coding part. And yes, I don't know if you have like some experience with with building other projects, uh, products, uh, digital products, or w with coding in general. But like this is tough process. Um, so I'm I'm really interested. How did you actually touch this one? Yeah. So at first, I kind of wanted to find some experts. So I went on Upwork, I went on LinkedIn, I tried to find people in my network that were experienced software developers. And I wanted to try and tell them my idea and hear what did they think, how feasible was it, how large of a team, how much money, how much time would I need to build it? And I chatted with probably five or six senior, I don't even know what senior in the software development wor world means, but probably 10, 15 plus years of experience. And I still remember one, one of the first ones I was telling him and I'm like, yeah, I want to combine QuickBooks. I want to combine this one. I want to combine this one. He's like, dude, that's going to take a team of 10 engineers, $2 million <laughs> and three years to make. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And I said, well, I got 5,000 bucks and I want it done in six months. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that, that's little... sometimes the, the problem, right? Like, especially when, when you speak with those, uh, senior engineers mm -hmm. working for, especially for fang companies that that's right. They, they have kind of different perspective of building software right like th there's something called mvp that you can really launch very fast and you really don't need the budget you don't need like a senior engineer and and then obviously those are those enterprise projects which obviously cost millions of, of of dollars right so when it comes to those like i i fully understand because in the end we've developed more than 100 different projects and uh, those projects range from five thousand dollars even less even less if i come back to my first uh freelance work uh upwork jobs actually i was doing like a uh google sheets integrations i was doing them for like 500 bucks for example so again those are smaller projects uh cheaper ones but then obviously we've built like projects for 500k plus so there's software development and software development but for, from from what you had a vision and the mockups I, i'm surely that I'm actually sure that you, you found like a cheaper, cheapest uh, version. So I'm actually curious uh, about that. Yeah. So I was a little discouraged for a second, but I was also kind of like, nah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, which <laughs> probably, probably not the greatest attitude, but I, I guess I'm trying to prove him wrong. And for my tool belt company, I have used onlinejobs.ph to hire a number of people from the Philippines. And mm -hmm. I figured that's where I'm going to try and start. And I found two people, I made a job posting there and I found this other guy who he had worked on a similar kind of accounting project for a different industry and he had it in his portfolio. So I was like, oh, cool. This guy knows relevant experience here. And he had another person for quality assurance and some other coding help. And he's like, yeah, let's go. So I start, I explained the vision, thought it was good. And we started coding and that happened for about a month. And in that month, by the end of the month, there was a login page and there was a home page that had my logo in it, but there was nothing really else. <laughs> okay. And I was like, what, what are you doing? He's like, we're coding. And he, he was a big talker. He kept telling me we're doing this, we're doing that. And I was, I, I didn't know much about code. I'd taken yeah. a class on Java and one on basic web development, like HTML, CSS, but I could see on Bitbucket for our commits that maybe once a week he was pushing like 10 lines of code. Oh, wow. And, okay. And I was paying not a lot of money, but a couple hundred bucks a week for him and this other lady. Then who, I think it's a lot of money actually for such a, for such a job, right? Like speaking of a login screen and, and website, especially nowadays with a uh, low code, um, tools, uh, and, and, but not even to code, talking about the low code tools, because like monthly, they are very expensive to actually build these as, but like just like a, um, uh, open source frameworks. Like exactly. average developers should ship it within one, two days. So <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I didn't know, I didn't know how it works, but I was like, this doesn't feel right. And yeah. so we were using PHP Laravel and mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to start teaching myself this thing. And okay. so I started watching YouTube videos and doing projects, just following along, making these other 
mini web apps. And I was like, this is kind of fun, actually. I like yeah. math. I like logic. I like the problem solving. Let me start doing this. And after a couple of weeks of me kind of learning on the side, not telling this developer, I was like, all right, I'm going to start trying to code some of these features. And I started doing that and I started shipping code way faster than these other guys. And I was working like an hour a day. Oh, wow. And I sat down with them and I told them, you have a week to push more code than I am. And you guys are working 40 hours a week. And at the end of that week, there was no more code push. So I fired both of them. And so there were actually two developers working on yeah, that. Yeah, one, one and, full-time, one part-time. And that was a full-time. Wow, that's crazy. But yeah. like you weren't doing like any check-ins or like meetings with them like so they could show it to you? Yeah, we were meeting like once a week and talking on Slack. And he he just kept saying, we're, we're, we're doing these things. He was kind of always talking about the future. Like, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do that. But oh, they wow. never actually did the, they never did the now. Yeah, so. yeah, sure. Yeah, so that, that, that you ended up, you ended up like really bad, really bad. Like usually, for example, because we have a lot of clients, for example, who um, go to us because they they have they have some kind of projects. They have like even SaaS platforms with a couple of users. Um, they usually actually hired first like Upwork freelancers or uh, Fiverr freelancers. But but the problem there lays in not that they don't have the project. They they have the project. It's actually working. It looks actually decent usually. But then. The problem is with the optimization, with the scalability, with the infrastructure and so on. So they come to us, they say, okay, there's no really way of using it. Like all of our user base is complaining because we actually maintain a lot of SaaS in the um, industry, like in the Amazon space. And then usually we have to actually rebuild everything from scratch and we actually have to um, really like rethink the whole infrastructure. So that's usually the code, the, the problem when, when someone is uh, hiring overseas. But at your case, like you were like completely scammed actually. <laughs> so that's so I'm so realizing. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just login page and basic report after like a month and a half. So I fired them and I kind of started doing my own thing kind of just building the framework of what are all the pages, what are the basic reports mm -hmm. and accounting like QuickBooks. It's a very comprehensive. It's a massive piece of software, but none of the logic is particularly complex. It's just adding, subtracting and a little bit of multiplication for quantity times price. So I was able to take it a good bit forwards. And then that's where I decided, let me go back to the experts who this time I had learned let me try and find people who had more startup experience, not those Google or app fang engineers who yeah. they had a different view and hear their tips on kind of the, the architecture. And they gave some helpful tips and I kind of continued on myself for probably about a month and a half before I realized, all right, I kind of want to host this thing. How do I get this live online? And I started again. I was like, I'll go, go back to YouTube. But those videos, I was just like, nah, I'm not doing this development operation stuff. It, it looked way too complex for me or and, and not enjoyable. So I went to Upwork this time and I was like, I'm just going to be really strict. I kind of know what I'm looking for. Can I find these people to actually do these specific tasks? And I was able to find two people on Upwork. One of them, kind of a general developer who was helping me with features that at first I gave him a small project test. I said, can you do this? And he did it in like an hour and sent it back all good. And yeah. I was like, that's more than my last two developers did in a month. <laughs> so you're hired. And then I found this other guy, Leo, who he, he's been fantastic. And he actually has experience working with Amazon MWS. And so he was kind of my main developer who was helping integrate with the Amazon system. So he had experience with this and he helped put in a lot of hours as well as getting us live on AWS and trying to think a little yeah. bit more about our architecture. So with these better developers part-time on Upwork, that's where we were able to finish with them and me. That was kind of the, the end team. Awesome. So awesome. So right now, actually you, you're here, you, you have the working platform, Sly Analytics. Let, let's talk about some of the features. So you said that you already have your existing uh, user base, uh, your, your clients. I'm really curious, actually, wh what would you consider like top three features that people actually choose Sly Analytics software and how is it helping them running their Amazon businesses? Yeah, that's kind of exactly why I created it for integrating three parts that I was using QuickBooks, Sellerboard, and A2X. 
So what seller uh, Sell Analytics is, is a complete double ledger accounting system to replace QuickBooks, as well as directly interfacing with the Amazon SP API to pull in your orders, your inventory data, financials, refunds. And it has that specific e-commerce specific analysis that Sellerboard and some of these other tools had. So I took those three features, accounting, integration, and analysis, and kind of put it into one. And that's what a lot of the sellers like is there's no complexity of needing to set up multiple tools together and that they can see everything in one picture, that they can see their whole zoom in on a per product level, but they can also see what's their bank account balance, what's their cash mm -hmm. flow, what's the inventory. That's uh, that's awesome, actually. And how, how big is your user base right now? Right now, around 30 people trying to trying to grow so not too big but got a couple sure but i think that i mean you said that you started around one year ago right so from from actually building in like from actually first um hiring those bad developers then like, learning to code and then shipping this now i think 30 is actually a great job right so still like you, you're bootstrap so i think there's a, a huge like really nice future ahead of you because you're very early in this game right so um i'm really really actually right now i want to ask you two questions so the first would be like a roadmap and then like your strategies about decline acquisition maybe first let's talk about the roadmap right like you said it's actually a very simple tool very simple platform you combine it those three things together and the simplicity definitely lures new sellers to you but I'm actually curious, like, what are the features that you really want to ship over the next year? Yeah, over the next year, I think there's a really cool intersection of profit, cash, and inventory. That right now, there's a number of great inventory management tools out there that especially for a private label company, if you're trying to factor in seasonality to say for Q4, I need to place orders in August, get the container here and get that in. But what these inventory tools they don't track is your cash flow. And because we actually connect directly to your bank account, we're able to say, and Amazon, we can say, well, looking at Amazon, your sales history, you probably need this much inventory, but based on your bank account, you don't have enough money to buy that. So yeah. trying to actually devise uh, a plan combining both inventory as well as your cash to say, well, let's maybe split it up into two smaller shipments. I think that's a really cool opportunity as well as I've kind of dabbled in some AI integration, not too much, but taking kind of some trends of reports over time and to be able to pluck out specific products and trends that are troublesome to say, if you have a hundred SKUs, it's kind of more than a little more than advanced reporting to say, well, your gross profit is down higher relative to these other products or your clicks are up, but your conversion rate is down. So mm -hmm. trying to give more specific analysis to this data that we all collect. That's that's actually really cool. I, what actually came to my mind just 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 right now is because you said that you are connected to the bank account and you actually see that, for example, someone doesn't have the uh, the money to to replenish the stock and so on. But what what came to my mind like there are those companies like I know actually one of them like I know uh, one of the founders really well. It, it's called um, Payability, and what they do is. Uh, he's actually Polish, living living in New York. Really cool guy. Uh, what, what they do is they are they are working like a bank, um, but for Amazon sellers. So I don't know if you know them, but like you can pretty much um, lend money. Like you you can ask them for money, uh, and then they, they will give it to you with like lower interest than than bank, and and then. What I, what I could see is like if, if if someone is running the business, it's actually connected to your system and then there's the integration with the bank, but at the same time, there's integration to Amazon and maybe some AI that actually analyze that there's a huge potential for certain products. It could have some integration with them. And then, for example, say, okay, there's a huge potential. Now you need more money to restock and you should actually now like reach out to them or something like this. It just it just comes right now from 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 my head, but I think this could be something very cool to to check. So um, yeah, j just thought about that. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. One other uh, kind of change in our roadmap is that early on, I envisioned this as a standalone software, 
kind of just like QuickBooks that people sign up and use it themselves. But as I kind of went back to those initial people that I had done the validation to, I realized that there was a really significant barrier to getting them to transfer their data over and switch these accounting systems they're familiar with yeah. for years. And there are some changes in the logic to fit e-commerce sellers better that I created, but that I would need to really educate these people and kind of change how they handle their finances. And so when I saw people struggling to switch and kind of not getting bought into it, I realized maybe I should try a more human approach done for you because once we can get people in and all your data synced, it's very easy to to stay in, but it's that initial hurdle. So I enjoyed accounting and I kind of made the decision to add the human aspect to it. That's, that's super nice. And I think it's very smart because one thing that we see a lot is when we are building actually, we are also working on helping companies build a lot of internal systems just just for them to run their daily operations with like a lot of integrations like automating of, of processes and what we see was see is that that's the biggest obstacle is that people um they love their their routines they love um, their um what they what they are used to right so whenever there's a new software and it's it, it it can really save them hours and hours but they have to learn using it first this is like a huge obstacle so we we are of course providing trainings to um to the companies when implement those those systems but like something that i i really learned over years is like that people hate change so um that's actually a very nice observation that you have and if you if you can actually add this human touch as well and hire someone on your side to to use your system and handle their accounting i think it, it is a game changer and i actually seen this in uh, amazon space a lot that behind a lot of tech companies there are also like services uh made by people and i think it it actually makes sense and now i actually see why yeah I was reflecting kind of about my validation process earlier and you mentioned starting with selling and I realized I could have, the pain point wasn't necessarily the software integrations, but the accounting done for them. Mm -hmm. And that I could have just validated by selling, I'll do your bookkeeping for you early on using existing tools that aren't as good, but it still would have alleviated the pain the same way versus I kind of went into it a little bit more solution oriented first. Got it, thinking got software it. would fix it oh yeah yeah surely and now ryan the second question that i just asked right so uh your strategies right now so it, it kind of is more like the question overall about your day-to-day -day job but i assume that right now at this stage when you have your uh mvp ready use already by users you really focus on growing your uh, customer base right so what are your strategies right now uh, for client acquisition that's a tough question and I'm still trying to figure out, but some of it networking, going on podcasts and some of trying to form partnerships because another thing I learned early on in doing more cold emails, more sales focused is that people are very wary of giving access to their financials to people they don't know. Oh yeah, And that accounting finances is, is a super sensitive topic, which I want to completely acknowledge for those people. And so if I'm able to form these partnerships with various people who can give a warm recommendation or intros or referrals, which is kind of how we're growing a little bit, it makes it a lot easier to say, well, how much money did you make? How many orders? And kind of really just get into the, to the weeds. So I'm doing some cold email, some cold outreach on Reddit, Facebook groups, and that gets me some people, but I'm really trying to figure out ways that I can get warm intros to more sellers. And there might be conferences too. I have not been to any. But Got it. Yeah, the conferences are pretty cool, but I can tell you one thing, <laughs> something very funny. I mean, for us, it's actually great because we, we are in the Amazon space, like market business space, and we, we are going to conferences. So our clients are kind of all of the people are, which are, who are going there, like all of the businesses. It can be a seller, it can be a vendor, it can be agency, or it can be even like a SaaS platform or like a accounting firm, like anything around businesses it could be even lawyers, right? Like if, if we got like lawyers who are just serving Amazon sellers and we could like build them some internal automations, that's, that's also great. But the, the problem that I see right now and, and a lot of people are actually in the community are talking about that is that it actually changed. Like it wasn't always like this, but if you go to any conference, any um, event, 
they are mostly service providers <laughs> and it's in and, and it's so bad to the point that um there are like a lot of after parties uh, uh, around like those more, po more more popular events that people who are organizing after parties they are checking double checking like really in detail that if you register to them that you are not a service provider that you are not another company that is running like a SaaS business and then trying to get sellers as well. Like I remember last year I was in the uh, Amazon um, Accelerate and there was like a, this networking party. Um, there were like a group of people who were just chatting, having some fun, having a drink, right? Not even talking about business at this point. And then that this one lady that, that she just came, she said, hi, how are you? And then she just asked right away, are you Amazon seller? And we said no, and then she just disappeared. So it it, it that bad, right? So it, it it really, like, of course, not every conference is like this, but I I I wouldn't say like conferences is, is is like a great thing right away, right? So those Reddit groups, Facebook groups, like there's a lot of uh, nice Facebook groups. I think mm, those could be like a really great uh, strategies to to do. Definitely, I would try uh, Amazon. I mean, we are going to conferences. We're just not going to, to that many of them any, anymore. But this is something that I wanted to share. It might be valuable to you. Yeah, that makes sense. And I still consider myself a seller first that I have the business, e-commerce business still running. It's slowed down a little bit, but I, I can appreciate trying to provide higher quality for them. And that's also in my messaging to other sellers. I try and lead with that, that I'm a seller first. This is based on my own pain points. Is this yeah. something that you've experienced as well? And hoping it does better, but I think sometimes that can resonate with other sellers. Sure, sure. Thanks, Ryan. It was awesome to to have you here, having the episode. I mean, again, you're the youngest founder I had ever mm -hmm. on the podcast. I think the second youngest one is is I. I am. <laughs> I'm actually 25, <laughs> so it's I'm not that young anymore. But uh, still, it, it was super fun to to talk to you. And I mean. Having you started the, the entrepreneurial journey in such a young age, it, it is crazy. And I think it's really inspiring to, to a lot of uh, listeners here as well. So thanks a lot, Ryan. And um, the last question I would, I would have to you is basically, yeah, if people want to try your software, if people have some had some questions to you, how they can find you? Yeah, the best way is go to our website, sellanalytics.com. That's S-E-L-L-A-N-A-L. TIX.com. And there's a contact form as well as an email that happy to talk all things Amazon finance or just Amazon in general. Awesome. Thank you. I'll make sure to include it also in the description of this uh, podcast. And yeah, thanks a lot guys for watching and Ryan, thanks a lot uh, for coming. Glad to be here. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. Bye-bye.